Hi, this is Marty and welcome back for another video. All right, this is uh, an important video. If you have not watched many of my earlier videos, like first 100 or first 50, especially my personal, you may not understand this video. So I, I kind of have to do this as a, as, a, as a standalone. I don't know if you've ever heard me say this before, depending if you're, if you're new to my channel or not. Every single one of my videos, I don't script anything. A video like this, you cannot be authentic and rehearse it. It ain't gonna happen. There is a, a, a demographic that watches YouTube and me uh, from, the, from the age of 18 to 44 years old. This is a very important demographic, especially 18 to 30. I, I'm going to show you what a real man is, how he acts, how he talks, what he does with honor and respect. This video is for one specific person. His name is Farouk Abdel Gwad Mohammed. Did I get that middle right? It's been a long time since I've said that. That is the name of the man that has been married to my mother for 43 plus years. Now, side note, I'm going to be talking directly to Farouk and my mother in this video. Farouk taught high school PE history later in his career and spent his entire career at one high school in Southern California. In his tenure there as a high school teacher, he brought gymnastics and I believe for the better part of 10 12 years, I think, was a judge in Southern California for CIF men's gymnastics. Farouk brought gymnastics where there was no program with him from Egypt to the United States and implanted his life of gymnastics and coaching into a high school in Southern California. In 1976 and 77, my half-sister wanted to take gymnastic lessons in Orange County. When my mom went to sign up, my half-sister, Farouk and my mom met. From 1977, 76, 77 to 1985, 86, let's put me. Farouk and I sp spent most days together. My mom was at work. That is my childhood from 1976-77 to 1985-86. If you look at any of my videos, you will hear things. You will see me act in a way and you will not believe that this video is possible. Someone might ask, how can you stand in this box and also stand in that box? I don't know. I can. A few months ago, I asked my mom, Mom, do you think I, at this, at this restaurant in Southern California near, near, near her house, like five minutes away, I said, Mom, do you think I owe Farouk a thank you? Before the words could even, do you think I owe Farouk a th Yes. My mom says, I owe it. I owe it. But would you like to know what drew that? Farouk, would you like to know? I would like you only to watch this video, Farouk, or others that I do where it, it fits. But this is your video. My mom, you, me, our video. There's this guy, Farouk. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Farouk, his name is Andrew Tate. Big star on YouTube, Farouk, I'm not kidding. This man, you know, Google, search Google, was searched more than Trump. Ridiculously famous. I was watching him one day. He said, Andrew Tate spends a lot of time in Dubai, the Middle East, right? The number one religion, Islam. All the religions, Farouk, the one that is going to be there at the end, Islam. Fine, fair enough, right? Andrew Tate was born in Chicago for a divorced family moved from Chicago or to London. Mm -hmm. So I would guess I'm an Orthodox Christian, but if I had to bet on one religion as if I were betting on the stock market for the future, you have to bet on Islam. Mm. Or near a mosque, I feel an energy that I, I'm at peace with. convert to Islam right now. He's attracted to the money in the Middle East. I kid you not. That's why he says that. 
this same individual, I watched him in, in like this, he was uh, like at a news conference. I say like, like he was talking to some other people, right? And I quote for Andrew Tate said to 18 to 30 year olds, to planet earth, <laughs> I'm almost embarrassed to say, I fuck so many bitches I didn't even care about. He said that. His philosophy is that a real man, when he reaches a certain level of status, job, money, whatever status to him that he has options, meaning if he's married, he can go outside of his marriage and have sex with other women through Andrew Tate says that that woman should look the other way because that man has reached a level of status. So Farouk, what did I hear? I heard Islam, Muslim, Quran. I saw a man pray five times a day. Read from the Quran with prayer beads for half my childhood. I kid you not. I basically, when I heard him say what he was saying, stood up, looked at the TV, and screamed at the TV. And I said, and I quote Farouk, there is no fucking way that I'm going to allow this person to disrespect is not going to happen. One of the things that's most important Farouk is I, as you do, have a foundation. That's me. That's you. This is our past. I'm not asking you, Farouk, to give up your past with me. I'm not, because I can't give up my past with you. You don't owe me an apology. Whether or not I want it, whether or not I feel I'm owed it. What I'm saying is, let it go. Allow you to be you. Let it go. Anything I've said, anything I've done from this day, when you watch this, in the past, forgive me or not, that is not the point. Forgive you or not, it's not the point. Let it go. You keep all of you, and I will keep all of me. And with that, you can build a new foundation. But you must be able to do that. And there's nothing wrong with not being able to do that. But you must look in the mirror and have and look at yourself as I look at myself and say, can I do that? You probably remember last time I was at the house. I am that person. That person is inside there. You might be getting older for, but for me, my childhood, you still in that foundation of you. You hold tight to that. You hold on to that for you. I'll hold on to that for me. Neither one of us have to give up anything. Neither one of us have to say something that we may not feel or don't feel it's necessary. Don't want to. It doesn't matter. I find this to be very interesting, Farouk. Very. Because you and I, we have one thing in common and it's better than you and it's better than me. What could that be? That would be your wife. That would be my mother. She stood by you, Farouk, for 43 years. She doesn't have a choice with me, she's my mom. Does she have a choice? Behind every great man, Farouk, Muslim or otherwise, is a great woman. And isn't that why you spent 43 plus years? How many years has it been? You are a very lucky man. I am a billionaire with the mother I have. And I am a great man. We are great men because of her. Did you do your part, Farouk? <laughs> yes, you did. Did you make mistakes? Yes. You keep them right in there, Farouk, in that foundation. You owe me nothing. What we, what I owe you and what you owe me is to build this new foundation for my mom, for your wife of 43, 44 years. What I would like to do, Farouk, is I would like to tell you all the things that you did right, all the things that I remember all the things that matter and all the things that make me the man I am today. Should I write that? I should erase it. Well, no, I'll leave it. No, I'll erase it.
You see, the most important thing when you look back on half-life is do you have to give up everything? Do you have to forgive for everything? No, you don't. The most important thing to remember in my 52 years is never be impressed with how smart you are. That is when you will become very stupid. The number one thing that I never did was lose respect for my mother. I never did. How could I? Right, Farouk? Are you easy? I'm not. She was the glue every day, Farouk. Every day. I cannot imagine what it would have been like to stand as a wife and a mother between these two men. Farouk, I sat in front of my mother and I asked her, do I owe Farouk a thank you? She said that I do. Even though she knows the foundation that I spoke about with regards to my past with you and your past with her. I mean, your past with me? She said, yes. Let's get to it. These are in no particular order. Go on, I just read what I got, right? Okay. I will never forget when we were watching television. Was it Bosom Buddies? Tom Hanks? You said Tom Hanks has talent. He will be somebody. He will be something. <laughs> How right you were. You also said that about Robin Williams, didn't you? Mork and Mindy. And my God, how right you were. That stuck with me for my entire life. I thought it was fascinating. How does he know? You also said that about the Flamingo Kid. What was his name? I forget his name. He was too. Not as big as, as Tom Hanks and Robin Williams, but how right you were. Never forgot that. How many, Farouk, how many people today can say that they got to watch Showtime, Cooper, The Alley Oop, Magic Johnson, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Worthy, playing against the Celtics, the 76ers, Chicago Bulls, Boston Celtics, the rivalries, Larry Bird, Magic Johnson. Who can say they saw all of that firsthand? I can. I'm not a basketball fan, Baruch, but I never Forgot that. Sure, I think we went to one game, two games. I think we won one, two games, right? But it was in our home every day. You die with those memories. The Lakers at that time, basketball, it's a different game. For me, basketball today versus no comparison. The rivalry between the Boston Celtics, the 76ers, Chicago Bulls, the Pacers, Lakers, that will never be repeated. And the shorts and the white socks, <laughs> it'll never be repeated. I got to see that because of you. Cannot make that up. <laughs> You're going to laugh at this one. I got to watch Eric Dickerson run the football for the Los Angeles Rams. How many people can say that? One of the greatest running backs to ever play the game. Now, he's going to take a second seat to uh, Emmett Smith. Oh, come on. <laughs> but Eric Dickerson? Oh, my God. Remember him? His glasses and the white neck guard that he wore? He, he, was, he, he ran the ball. I, I mean, if you have never watched Eric Dickerson run the ball, go watch highlights. The way he sprinted and cut and moved and the strength of that man and the speed. It was, it's not like your everyday player. It's special. Very special. And I got to watch that. You'll find this one funny. <laughs> Do you know, Farouk, that till this day, I can watch men's gymnastics and on the rings, palm horse, <laughs> release moves, giants, all of them, and I can take tenths of a point off and judge them. Pretty good for someone who knows basically nothing. <laughs> they have this thing on YouTube. It's called Lord of the Rings. Every so often, Farouk, I will watch, and they're either Russian or like Ukraine, China, fruit. The rings don't move. <laughs> These men swing and the rings don't move. It doesn't matter what position they're going into. L, the cross, arms out. The strength of these young men, and well, they're five feet, you know what I mean? They're one big muscle thing. It's incredible. I appreciate that because of you. Most people don't even know what's going on. I do. Sometimes I'll brag, say something. You taught me that. I was just a part of it, or I asked questions, and you answered me. Without you, that would not have been there. Not too many people can say that. I can. Yeah, I just wrote notes. <laughs> don't pause when you swing. Oh, it's got to be together. <laughs> I did. You know, it was difficult listening 
as, as, as an American and you had a hard job being a stepfather, it was all hard. It was, it was difficult. But you know an interesting thing that came out of all of that? Which is why it was so odd that you and my mother said that I said what I said that last time I was there. And I wrote you a letter and apologized and apologized to my mom. Because I wrote, respect Islam in the Middle East. So it says, respect Muslims, Middle East. Somehow, through what I saw from 1976-77 to when I left and the ins and outs after that, because I think I was, it was another three or four years before I just lost touch, right? I developed a respect in some way, in some level of me for the Muslim community in the Middle East. Still with me till this day. In fact, Andrew Tate, I get so angry when he says what he says because he's nothing respectful of the Quran or the Muslim community. Not at all. Complete piece of shit, Farouk. Complete. You would never even sit at the table with him. And he would not be able to sit at the table you sit at. He does not have enough honor and respect. It is completely absent. He doesn't even know what it means. Something that I know that you are completely unaware of that happened between you and I. You can't even parent this fruit. In 1985, I believe it was the summer before I moved from uh, Orange County, Southern California, to, uh, to Ventura County. You and I got into an argument when we were on the, the, uh, the, the tile. Do you remember the argument? And I stepped toward you. Do you know what that was, Farouk? I know you don't. I didn't know either. I learned what it was just a few days ago when I was thinking about a lot of different stuff. For a boy to become a man, Farouk, he must do one thing. Stand up to the man in his life. Do you know, Farouk, that I never knew that in my entire life? But do you want to know what I did know? I never parented my two boys past a line would stand up to me. I would watch them very carefully. And I allowed them to respectfully disrespect me standing up to me. Does that make sense? If they got out of line for her, I put them in their place. But I never stifled them. Now, our beginnings are much different. I'm just who I am. You know the ABCs of me, but on that day, I became a man. I stepped to you and stood up for myself. My two boys were allowed and taught, not stifled, not put down. They were allowed to do the same. My entire life of 22 years of being a father to those two boys, I never knew why I was doing what I was doing. I had no idea. I just, I just knew it was right. I just knew that based on this and our experience, how to parent them. I wonder how much education on your part, gymnastics, coaching, PE, judging, did you really know what you were doing or the best that you could? Interesting. If you were going at parenting the best that you could, interesting, isn't it? That a altercation, a situation between you and I where I was forced, I don't know why I did it. You may not even remember it, but I do. I stood up and that carved the absolute foundation for me as a father. We're never stifled under my thumb, told to shut their mouth, told to shut up, no voice by me, never Farouk. They knew the line and I let them respectfully disrespect me just past that line. They are young men. Without you and that moment, what would I have done to them? Can you imagine if they were trying to stand up to me and I came on like, you, like I can and I shut them down? Magic, amazing, change a life. The entire path that those two boys, my children, are on. But it was done right. And they're great young men because of you and I and that day. Fact. 100%. This one took me a long time, but it's part of me. From 3 p.m. to 8.30.
I was alone, wasn't I, Farouk? A lot. That is showing its face today with such value. Was it the, was it the best for Farouk? No. Was your routine the best for, you know, a seven, eight, nine year? No. Do you know how alone I am today in my own skin and happy? No problem. Am I supposed to scream and yell and be upset at the foundation I talked about earlier with you and say you should not have had children? I could. Nah, I'm gonna let that go. I'm gonna remember all the times I was in my bedroom at peace because I do it today. Is it a part of me? Yeah. But maybe if I tell you this, you won't feel so bad. Or maybe you'll have a different thought, like I do. I don't think about woulda, coulda, shoulda. I don't. I cherish my alone time now and what I do with it. And I remember all the intricate things I used to do in my bedroom. Legos, coloring, all of it. Alone. I am not afraid of being alone. In fact, I'm quite happy being alone. Farouk, one of the things that you used to say a lot. At the time it was, it was, where would my mother and I have ended up? After 52 years of being alive, I'm going to give you that one, Farouk. My acceptance, you may own that. That is a statement that you can have and be proud of. If I am on either side and I have to decide, can Farouk stand tall on that statement and be proud of that or can he not with no in between? I'm going to give it to you, 100%. So if you, from this day forward, ever doubted my mother or I and where we would have been, I want you to have enough confidence in my mom. She deserves it. That we would have been okay. But that does not take away from the fact that you want to stand tall and be proud that you, loyal, 43 years, your routine, all the boxes checked. No, the man of the house can say that. You can say that. And I will say, my mom would have taken care of me. I would have been okay because I know who I am. But all I have is with Farouk or without. As I stand here today at 52, I don't know what without is. I only know that you were there. And for that, as you still are today. You may be proud of that and own that. You earned it. Soccer is a big one, for The foundations that I talked about, I raised my two boys on the soccer field, Farouk. I have a passion for the game. I truly do. I didn't even know what soccer was. There's a, a difficult past between you and I on soccer. So what I would like to say is this. I have a very fond appreciation for gymnastics. I have an even greater fondness for soccer. So do my two boys. Would I have played baseball or football or nothing at all had you not been there? For me, ice hockey, gymnastics, soccer. Baseball, football, basketball, rugby. But American football, basketball, and baseball, care less. Seriously. But I always tune into gymnastics when it's on, if it is. Soccer always. Highlights always. And ice hockey. Those are the three. You got two out of the three, Farouk. Thank you. That's a win. I'm thankful for that. And I appreciate that. And I appreciate you bringing that to my life. Because we don't know what would have happened had you not done that or been there. Farouk, structure is one thing. You take structure to a whole nother level. Woulda, coulda, shoulda. If you take something that is so rigid, so structured, and you learn by that, I mean strict, box, done. Till this day, Farouk, before you were tired, I could put a timeline and tell you everything you were doing from the moment you woke up until your door shut to go to sleep. No lie. Monday through Friday, Saturday and Sunday. I could do that. I'm not kidding. Do you remember? Can't watch TV and you're going to sneak. Better remember what channel it's on. And you remember, better remember where the volume was set. With that much rigid structure and authority and discipline, if that is what you are taught and that's all you know, where do you go from there with that kind of foundation? Good places, solid places. Through that rigid structure, I lived my life, lived my life with this invisible foundation of that structure. And what do I do? I go out of my way to break it. But Farouk, you, you can't. It was too ingrained in me. You can't break it when it's that rigid. It's second nature to me. With that rigid, rigid structure, I know my place. I know how to exist in certain environments where other people have a hard time. I'm like, what the, why is it so hard for you? Know your place, get in line. 
No, the structure. For me, it's a walk in the park. From no structure, wild and crazy, seconds later, structure. How do you do that, Marty? How do I do that? How do you not do that? What's the matter with you? Whose name is ringing in the back of my head? That would be Farouk Mohammed. You gotta call a spade a spade, right? From the highest forms of abusive structure comes a real man like me. Is it the best? But at 40, 45, 50, 55 years old, to be able to go to rigid structure, to no structure, and back again, like a chameleon, without even water on a duck's back, no problems. And people in awe. How do you do that, Marty? What did you ever think that? That's what you were doing? Me neither. I raised two other young men the same way. And they're good boys. They're good young men with the same talents that I have that came from my childhood. From 3 p.m. to 8.30. Unless, of course, Laverne and Shirley was on after happy days, right? Then I could stay up till nine o'clock. That structure goes hand in hand with Discipline. The amount of discipline for fear that I was going to end up like whatever your biggest fears, it was strict and harsh. That forced me to want to be a man. 18, done, on my own, till this day, I hold on to that fabric of discipline. And that fabric of discipline translates into honor and respect for self and others. And I taught that to my two boys as well. And that honor and respect and discipline and structure is what makes me a real man. This is one I can't figure out, Farouk. All over planet Earth, people say that women are not respected. And I, Farouk, I don't know, I, you know what I'm saying? A Little bit of latitude, I, planet Earth, right? I respect women. I don't have physical relationships with women, Farouk. I don't. I'm honorable, respectful. Fruit, I can do whatever I want. I don't. I'm respectful. I don't take bed with women that I don't care about. I think we both know and understand what I'm talking about. It was a long, long time ago. Where do those values come from, Farouk? Islam? Egypt? Your discipline? Your structure? I wouldn't have it any other way. That is honorable and respectful. To have the number of years you have, to have someone ask you, Farouk, in your life, how many women have you shared with? Two? Three? Four? Ridiculously low. Very few men can say that. My number is low too. Sometimes I wish it was higher, I'll be honest with you, Farouk, but I could turn that around anytime I like. I don't. It's not who I am, and it's not who you are, is it? Obviously. Nature, who I am inside, and nurture, what I was taught. I am a real man, just like you. The number of women we have spent time with is small and with honor and respect for self and others. We stand tall on that and it creates a real man. Wouldn't have it any other way. An Egyptian Muslim, I believe, is at the foundation of that nurture. I know had you not been there, I would not be able to say what I'm saying now. I think that even in my foundation, my nurture would have been the more women, the better. That is not a real man. And that falls directly in line with what you want to be proud of. I saved you. That's a big word for Ru. But on that one, this point, I'm going to give it to you. You've earned it 100%. Your structure and discipline and the way you lived your life with regards to your foundation of family and Islam absolutely created a real man in me where I do not get with strange women. Stupid, stupid stuff. 100%. We have to go our own ways, Farouk, in life. Your way's this way, sometimes my way's that way. Other times, you just have to respect other people's ways. But one thing that I learned at a very early age, no matter my experiences, young or old, I'll keep this simple. Because of you and your structure and your discipline, I 100% understand and respect drugs. Farouk, I'll be honest with you, Nancy Reagan, Ronald Reagan, war on drugs, the marijuana and all that, it's legal now, Farouk. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. There's a lot more dangerous drugs than that. Because of your structure and discipline, I 100% respect drugs. My life, my choice. Your life, your choice. You respect them, so do I. That came from you. I don't think I would have gotten that anywhere else. Mm -mm. Very difficult to see back then. Impossible, Farouk. But if I think really hard, yeah, I'll give it to you, 100%.
<laughs> well, <laughs> this goes without saying. Respect school and teachers. Do you know that I had five policemen around me trying to protect from me because he disrespected the teacher? The principal comes out of the school. Seriously, this is a true story. What is going on here? The police, because he lied. He just completely disrespected the teacher. Completely. It was his fault. Completely, Farouk. They're like, Mr. Glenn, you, you can't put your hand. <laughs> and Farouk, I never put my hands on. I never believed in that physical punishment. That was just not my way. Interesting fact on that. Had we not had our lives together, would I have been that type of person? I'm not, and I wasn't. Now, they can thank you for that, because we handled that. I took it. <laughs> How it went? And I can take it, Farouk. And then some. Stand up, stood up. A man. The principal, he goes, I know Marty Glenn. He's a good father. <laughs> if he is trying to get his hands on his son, there's a good reason. Turns out, Farouk, all of the police were around me. You know what they said to me? I kid you not, uh, eighth grade. He said, Mr. Glenn, do you know what you're doing wrong? I said, what? You're doing it in public. I said, what? I said, officers, they're, they're big guys, Farouk. I said, let's get one thing straight. My son lied to that teacher. I supported him, believing him, and had a parent-teacher conference with him and the principal or the vice principal. And I find out today that after I did that for him, he lied. It was his fault all <laughs> Farouk. It was his fault the whole time. I supported him and had his back. I told the officers. I said, officer, I'm just, let's get this straight. He does that again. I'm going to get my hands on him. All that I ask of you officers is don't handcuff me. Read me my rights, put me in the back of the car, take me to jail. And I get out of jail. You know, the joke, Farouk, I get out of jail. He does it again, and I'm going to do it again. Now, I didn't put my hands on him, Farouk, because the car, <laughs> Farouk, he was in the back seat. And you know, the child things, I couldn't get, <laughs> I'm on the outside and the door was locked. It's the only reason, his face, I could see his face through the window, he was scared to death. It's the only reason I probably didn't go to jail that day. Truth be told, I'm going to jail for that. Where do I sign up? Because I told those officers, my boys will not be the two that are disrespecting you when they're 17, 18. They will not be. They're good young men. And those officers thanked me. Shook All of them shook my hand. Sometimes you gotta do unfavorable, unfavorable things when you're doing the best you can as a father and hope it turns out. I wrote this down and I know that it matters. It's a difficult one. An introduction to religion. I believe, Farouk, that you can understand for me two different cultures, two different religions, two different sides of the world. It's just a tough one. I will tell you this. <laughs> I appreciate Islam and Christianity and Jews, but I understand the uniqueness and the differences. And out of respect for religion, I am not going to say anything negative. But I have no thoughts of negativity of growing up in a home from 7 to 1415 with Islam and the Quran. I do not. I can't even imagine life going another way. I just, it, it would be foreign to me. Because let's just say I said, I don't, I don't care about any religion. They're not for me. I'm not for them. But if someone said, you respect and are proud, you grew up in a Muslim home with the Quran, and you, you, huh. yeah, <laughs> I can't. Yeah, I, I, I got to say, it's part of my foundation. Yeah. Yeah, that's the truth. The cultural differences, it's tough for a kid growing up. In California, United States, you know, Middle East, Muslim, Islam, Quran, it's tough. Praying five times and the whole thing, fruit. But I walked away with that foundation. It's with me today. And I'm not a very religious person, Farouk. Actually, not very much at all. Very spiritual. And that, what I just said, I'm sure you understand. Would I have had that when I returned or when you and my mom came to pick me up that day from Ann and George. I would like Farouk to say this my way, if I may. You might smile and laugh. I know my mom will. That was one fucked up day, Farouk. You know, I know you're thinking about the other side of that. I have my own thoughts on that, Farouk. Let that one go. But hang your hat on what happened with the religious part of it. It was fucked up. Up. Wrong. I was wrong. They were wrong. It was just stupid. The other side of it. Let it go. All right. Keep that in your foundation over there. I keep it in mine. 
Let it go. Farouk, do you know that women never open the door? I always do. One of the most fantastic things ever is I dated this girl, Farouk, for three years. Farouk, do you know that she never touched the handle on the car door? When I am with a woman, they exit elevators before me, even if I don't know. I open the door for all women. I remember today in Las Vegas when you, I was standing right here. My mom was right there. You're right there. You know, in my head, I'm like eight, nine years old. Maury, open the door for your mother. Well, as eight, nine, I don't know how, Mike, what? You do it. <laughs> I did it. Do you know from that day forward that was ingrained in my head? I don't know why. That's a real man. I don't think I would venture to guess that you have no idea, Farouk, would you? I mean, like on the back of my eyelids, like it is a part of how I treat women. And what I find so fascinating is, well then why does Islam get such a bad rap for treating women like garbage? It's a very big topic. My opinion, your opinion, my mom's opinion, push it all aside. When I am around, no woman opens her own door. That's a win. Because the foundation of that transfers to every other thing that I do when it comes time to considering how a real man treats a woman. <laughs> I think that's pretty cool. I really do. I've never forgotten that. Never. Save the best for last. It's important to be able to take a hit. It is. Did you teach me, Farouk, how to fight back a yell? Just asking. You've seen me at my worst. Sometimes, Farouk, I think that's my best. Just asking. Being able to become a monster, Farouk, to protect self or others, that's a real man. It is. When there's structure and discipline. And I had and have a ton of structure and discipline. Does that structure and discipline, Farouk, when I'm you know, when I was with, with my wife or, or, or girlfriend and I'm yelling or just going crazy and they say, can you please calm down? And I do. Yes, I can. Thank you. Does that puzzle fit? Is it those odd teachings of just being Farouk Muhammad with no game plan, with no playbook, and it just fits together like a puzzle with who I am inside and what I became through the nurturing of age 7 to 14, 15, 18, and everything I've been through, you have to wonder. You just do. How about being in a fight with a woman? You're fight arguing, you know, whatever, right? And you stop and you look and you remember opening her door. You remember the goodness, respect. You're not just, you're not just sharing a bed with her. You care about her. She matters. And yet with d discipline and structure and everything else, and sometimes you're a tyrant, and sometimes you're the man of the house, you stop and you walk up and you hug her. I've done that. I do that, Farouk. How does that happen? You have to wonder. No one taught me that. But it seems to make sense in betw between the structure, the rigidness, and the ability to have discipline, to not be controlling, but to be in absolute control. There's a massive difference between those two statements. To be controlling is to be a little boy, but to be in absolute control is to be a man. Because only a good woman, only a woman who has honor and respect for self and for her man will follow that man in absolute control. I am that man, Farouk. You've been married for 43 years and a few months ago, I asked my mom, mom, do I owe Farouk a thing? Yes, you do, Marty. Is that what my mom was trying to tell me for a very long time? There is no doubt. Stand up for myself. There is no doubt. You are, you were, well, come on, I'll spade a spade, Farouk, come on. A very worthy adversary of any young man developing and trying to stand up tall for himself. I stood up to you and I opened that door to manhood and my two boys stood up to me just as I stood up to you. And I gotta say, I think I'm scarier than you. Just saying. I'm proud of them. I'm sure if you look back, you are proud of me. It's not easy to stand up to an authoritative figure when you come from such a small size. <laughs>
Is this how you spell that, Farouk? <laughs> Is that how you spell that? <laughs> we'll leave that one alone, okay? Not many people can say, Farouk, that they saw Las Vegas coming over that hill. The lights. I did. All of them. Not many people can say that they walked into Caesar's Palace, Oasis, The Flamingo, MGM, Desert Inn, and heard the coin drop. I did. The four and a half, five hour drive. It felt like it was forever. I do it now, Farouk, and it's like, really? It seems like twice as long. <laughs> that is a fond memory. To be honest, I don't even know why you liked Vegas. You know what I'm saying? Muslim gambling, the whole thing. I know, I get it, I understand. It was so cool to be able to tell people, they're like, what? What are you talking about? <laughs> what am I talking about? There's no lights anymore. You go there and you get a ticket. No, no. <laughs> lights, everything, it was unbelievable. And the money, it was unbelievable. God. I'm sure my mom and you, I'm sure Farouk, you remember, and you have the same feeling I do. It was amazing. You know, Palm Springs, God, so hot. Palm Springs is not as fond as Las Vegas for me, but you know, I gotta tell you, the only thing I really remember Palm Springs, Farouk, is all of us at the pool, and I'm never wearing a Speedo. <laughs> I don't know how you did it. But that's kind of how it went for me in Palm Springs. But regardless, we went. It was good. You're gonna laugh. Sound of Music. I listened to that, and it's one of my favorite albums. The Lonely Goat Herd. All of it. Do, re, I mean, all of it. When you're a jet, you're a West Side Story. I still listen to that, Farouk. Grease, Excalibur, Papillon. Was it Midnight Express? Do you remember that young man, true story, who put hashish on him here and he got caught on the bus? All of this, Happy Days, Laverne and Shirley, all of it. I can't thank you for the news, but I can't knock it and be negative on it either. I'm sure there's things I've missed. I've also touched on things that I bet I liked going to the football games. It was so strange to me. The CIF championship, you know what I'm saying? The Viking, you know? And, and, and they just always used to like throw touchdowns. And like, I, I thought I was at a professional game. Sometimes for me, Farouk, I was very immature for my age. Two, three, four years behind, I think. The road to a real man. It's sad that sometimes you have to come at 52. Would you like to know, Farouk, something about the dishwasher? I gotta tell you, I don't like emptying it. Almost like refuse. Being a latchkey kid was, was really hard. It was tough. All that encompasses being a latchkey kid, Farouk, that's on my mom, 100%. It's tough is being a latchkey kid and everything I went through with regards to that and the food and the notes and the chicken and the oven and all that, a part of this structure and discipline? I want to think so. I want to believe so. So I say, yes, it is. Farouk, in closing, I hope that what I've said in my word have given you what you've needed from me and from other students, your, your gymnasts. You impacted lives that you know and lives that you don't know. I know it. Fact. And when you take your last breath, as we all do, death and taxes, take that last breath knowing that you mattered and you changed lives. You made steps for other men to become men. You were a part of the choices, the discipline, the structure, the coaching, the teaching, that another human being is going to use to become what they are meant to become. I believe that it's a lot of people. A lot. When you look back on high school and elementary school as an American citizen, for I don't know how it is 
in Egypt. You think back and you basically just ask yourself, did that person impact my life? Yes or no? The majority of students say yes to you, Farouk. The structure and the discipline that you brought is why they say yes. Nothing says I love you like discipline and structure. When it's given from father to son instead of the situation that we have, it's taken differently. That's just the way it goes. But you know, I wonder if I benefited more because you weren't my biological dad or father than Tyler and Preston with their biological father. Something to think about. And if I'm thinking about it, might be some truth to it because it's just harsher. It's just rougher. It takes more character to deal with it, to get through it, to figure out the nuts and bolts of it. Your feelings hurt. Fight back. Win. All. Everything intermixed. Right? This is the last thing I wrote, Farouk. And I don't need to read from it. I don't know, Farouk, that I can look back and say I would change anything. But I can look forward. And without giving up the foundation that I spoke about, you get to do the same. To only look forward and not admit, say anything. Just let it go. This June, I will send you a Happy Father's Day card because you earned it. From this day forward, in my home, in whatever home I have in the future, I will place a picture of you in my home. And I will honor and I will respect you and your life and what you did for my mother and for me. A picture of you will be placed in my home until the day I die. And I will look at it and I will smile and I will think of the foundation and letting it go and looking forward. I do not want to give up and I won't. The compartments of my life, our relationship, and I'm not asking you to either, but you and I, we have something in common, Farouk. Your wife is my mother and she is the glue, the strength that put up with you that put up with me. I owe it to you to let go so that I can repay my mom for being great. Farouk, they don't make women like that anymore. Every word that I have spoken in this video is for you and you deserve it. My mom deserves to hear it. You both deserve to hear it. There's a big past, a lot of foundation. But Farouk, I promised my mother that when it came to you, I would be there for her. You may choose whatever path you want that's right for you, and I will not take offense. Farouk, I am a proud American. You are a proud American. You have a foundation of an Egyptian heritage and a Muslim religious foundation. I too have all of that because I was raised from seven to 15 by you. I want to be able to be supportive and to help my mom to help you and everything in this video and everything I've said comes from me and me alone. Farouk, I'm gonna say this my way. No one tells me what to fucking do, Farouk. No one. This video is for you. You earned it.
And although I will always call you by your first name, you will get a Father's Day card and a happy Father's Day for the rest of my life. You earned it. And you did the best that you could. Do you remember the conversation? Farouk, better than most, did I learn how to be a father from you? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Am I a good member of society? Yes, I am. Are my children? Yes, they are. Am I a well-rounded, structured, disciplined, real man? 100%. I am. Am I respectful to women? And with regards to that, am I a real man? Respecting self, honoring self, and the women that I choose to be with. Yes. Where does that come from? That would come from you, Farouk. Thank you for all of that. You succeeded, Farouk. Asherah, Waliyatriyam, Banyadeya la Shukran lak Farouk.